What's up, .NET developers? Do you love ASP.NET Core Blazor, but sometimes you have a hard time deciding whether you want to build a new app in server-side Blazor or Blazor WebAssembly? Well, in this video, we're going to go over a new project template, the project template for Blazor that's coming out in .NET 8, right here on Learn C Sharp and .NET with Isaac. Hey, folks. Isaac Levin here with another edition of what's new in .NET and C Sharp, where we're going to be going over all of the cool things that are coming out in C Sharp 12 and .NET 8, all the way up to .NET Conf, which comes out in November of 2023. And if you're liking this sort of content, you know, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment down below about what are some of the cool things that you're excited about coming out in .NET 8 and C Sharp, and well as you know, share along with your friends so they can do the same. One of the things that I'm really excited about with you know the newest iteration of C Sharp and .NET is some of the enhancements that are coming to Blazor. I, I've been a Blazor developer since it was first announced because I love that ability to build C Sharp applications that kind of run in the browser and do sort of cool things. And we've done a few videos around Blazor, specifically around server-side rendering and stream rendering. So if you haven't seen those, be sure to click the link up top and take a look at them and let me know what you think about them. But if we've been building before, you know, in the in the for plan around the previews of .NET 8 or even we're building apps in .NET 7 or .NET 6, we do have to make a decision immediately when we're building Blazor apps. Do we want to take advantage of the Blazor server style of um, building apps, which uses WebSockets to uh, get that rich client interactive experience? Or do we use Blazor WebAssembly, which takes advantage of the WASM runtime to run our C Sharp and our .NET applications in the browser? And there have been, to this point, two different templates for that. There was a Blazor server template and a Blazor WASM template. And now in the, in the latest preview, preview five specifically of .NET 8, there is a unified Blazor web app template, which takes advantage and coalesces all of the great things that you can do with server-side rendering, which is coming out in .NET 8, server um, Blazor, Blazor server, as well as Blazor WebAssembly. And I'd love to show what this new template looks like and how we can get started using it. So let's actually go over to my screen really quick. Right here, I'm in a console app. I'm in the command line, and I'm just in a temp directory. And before I started this video, I installed the latest version of the .NET runtime. So if you take a look at .NET info, and I go here, zoom in, as you can see here, I have preview five of the .NET 8 runtime. So that's what you need to get access to this new preview, or to this new template. So what I want to be able to do is I want to create a .NET a new .NET project, which takes advantage of that new template. And that new template is just called Blazor. So in the past, we've used Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor WASM or Blazor Server, but now we just have a Blazor ones. And then we can specify an output, and let's just call this new Blazor. And this is what this is going to do is it's going to create an instance of that new Blazor web app template. Um, and from here, we can actually go into Visual Studio. So let's actually pop up in Visual Studio, go File, Open Project. And it can go into our new Blazor and do that so before we actually go through some of the changes that have been made or the the what the experience is with using this new template let's take a look at that you know if we want to get access to this template from visual studio so we can go right click to our solution explorer add new project and if i search for blazer here in our templates you see that there's a new blazer web app template and if i click next i can specify the project in the location as well as pick what framework I want to use. But in this particular case, because this template is new to .NET 8, we only have .NET 8 as a uh, option in the dropdown. So let's close out of this. So let's actually take a look at what the new template for this new unified Blazor template looks like. So it's still using the web SDK of .NET. Um, it's using .NET 8 and nothing really crazy in this particular um, project. So if we go to pro program.cs, if you remember when we did our server-side rendering video, uh, we talked about a couple of things that you need to add to your applications to get to take advantage of the server-side rendering capabilities in Blazor. Most notably, the add register components extension to service collection. So that register services require our server-side rendering of register components. And then also you needed to specify specify map razor components and then pass in a razor component into it. And you notice that it's app 
And if we if you've been developing apps in Blazor, you're familiar with the app Razor component. It's kind of the the catch all component that kind of starts off all of the the routing and the particular things that we need. And this is great because if we take a look at app, for instance, you'll notice that there the 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 router is still there and the found and not found. And what's cool about this now is that this is actually plugged into endpoint routing, so it handles both server and client side routing. So this is really really valuable because we can just plug in the router and it's going to do all the things that we're expecting to do. There are a couple of things that are additional um, to our app.razor. If um, you're familiar with this in the past, we still have that, like I mentioned, but then we also have the HTML head and then we have this script tag. Because you remember when we needed to add server-side rendering capabilities to Razor components, we had to add the fully qualified um, HTML um, the, HC, the a fully qualified HTML file to be able to server side render those particular Razor components. So, you know, that's really, really cool. When we take a look at main layout, main layout, it looks the exact same and then it goes to nav menu and that's the exact same as well. And this is all really, really exciting because if you look at app Razor, you know, it's it, that by default, it's not set up for client routing. But in the future, there's going to be enhanced navigation that gets act, that gets us access to that client routing, a client side routing that we're familiar with. Um, and one thing that you might have noticed as well, if we take a look at our pages um, section, we only have two components now. We used to have three. We used to have index. We used to have um, show data, and we used to have counter. Um, before we actually take a look at, at and talk about why that's the case, let's actually just run this project and see what this um, project looks like and how the experience is when we're running it. So let's do that. It's going to kick off a build, and it's going to run our application. And then I move this over from a different window. And then I'm going to open up that. So let's go to our networking tab. So if I refresh this page, as you can see here, just move this a little bit. So as you can see here, there's no WebSockets being loaded. There's no Blazor Web. There's no WASM runtime being loaded. It's just the BlazorWeb.js, which wires up that server-side rendering, and then our um, actual document. And then if you look at our fetch data, same experience, right? Remember what we did in a previous video where we talked about stream rendering to make this uh, work. So if you look at, if you click away and click fetch data, you know there's a loading and then it populates, right? Because we're using stream rendering. So let's actually take a look at what that looks like. So if you go to our show data, we're adding that streaming uh, stream rendering attribute, and then we're just simple simulating um, retrieving that data asynchronously. So that's using a task on delay. And if we look at our index .razor, um, component, this is just a simple component that's going to be server side rendered. But both of these components are actually server side rendered ones using stream rendering to get that data across the way that we want it so let's do this let's go through the process of adding um, a new component that uses that client interactive experience that i talked about like that counter component so let's click that so let's uh, click in our pages add new razor component and let's just call this counter uh, razor and then I'm going to take the code from the previous template. So this is some code from that previous template of the of counter. And then let's just wire this up to our router. So in our nav menu, add that. So now this is looking really, really close to what the previous template looked like, right? So we have a counter that you know takes advantage of an on-click event, which fires increment count. But there's one additional thing that we need to do to add um, this server-side Blazor, Blazor server capabilities to the server-side render uh, Blazor uh, application. And that's if we go into our program.cs, if we take a look at add Razor components in the iService collection, we have another extension for add server components. And if we take a look at what that is, it adds services to support rendering interactive server components in a Razor component application. So that's what we need to add for that. And then there's one additional thing that we'll need to add back to our counter. And that is to add a particular attribute for render mode server. And in the future, um, we're going to have a fully complete like WASM server mode as well, which is really going to be exciting. So WASM server mode is already wired up, but our render mode assembly, I think is what it technically is called, not Razor, not render WASM, it's render mode web assembly um, to get you know full Blazor web assembly experience. But right now that's not quite there yet. But if we wanted to, for instance, like get access to this without having to do some of these things, we could take advantage of um, um, a per, an argument that we pass in to the command line. So if we do .NET new Blazor web assembly, 
and then use server. So use server that so that's going to create a um, Blazor server that is already set up with an interactive counter experience, right? This isn't available in Visual Studio yet, um, but it will be in the future, right? So if I was to click new here um, and let's just actually do that. So let's actually just call this Blazor new Blazor one because naming is fun. And then we'll go new Blazor one. And then let's just open this up in VS Code. And then let's move this over here. So if we open this up and we look at our pages, there's also there's a counter here and then we have render mode server. And then if we look here, we're using the add server components, right? So this just shows you that you can um, from the command line, you can get access to that counter experience. But I wanted to show what it would be look like if we added it manually, right? Um, but you have access to it right immediately if you use that use server arg uh, argument as a part of the .NET new Blazor CLI. All right. So I think what's really, really exciting about this is that you know, it's bringing more and more good experiences to Blazor. And that's awesome because I think Blazor is the, the best way today to build on applications for the web. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more and more enhancements coming out all the way up to .NET Conf. And if you are too, be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think. I'm excited to see what some of the cool things you're building. So that's it for this video. Take care.